بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم عن جابر رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ قال قال رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم لا یدخل احد منکم عمله الجنہ ولا یجیرہ من النار ولا انا اللہ برحمۃ اللہ رواہ مسلم جابر رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ نریٹس دی میسنجر آف اللہ سیڈ نو گڈ ڈیڈ آف اینی ون آف یو کین ٹیک ہیم ٹو ہیون or save him from hell and even myself I will not enter paradise except by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this hadith Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has explained the entry into the paradise or the salvation from the hellfire is solely dependent on the rahmat and grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. no one would able to go into paradise without the rahmat of allah no one will be saved from the punishment of allah without the grace of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has included himself in this and said even myself I will not go into paradise without the rahmat of Allah. Even in one hadith, when Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a similar hadith, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was explaining that no one will enter into paradise because of his good actions. The Sahaba said, even you, O Prophet of Allah, he said, even myself, if Allah's rahmat will cover me, then I will go into paradise. So the lesson we learn from here is that the entry into paradise without the rahmat of Allah is not possible. And salvation from the hellfire, from the painful punishment of Allah is not possible without the rahmat of Allah. Now, a question may rise in one's mind, what about the good deeds we do so what is the outcome of the good deeds then so the answer to this is we should always keep one thing mind in our minds even our good actions are out of the rahmat of allah they are the result of the rahmat of allah a person's good deed cannot happen without the rahmat of allah without the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has also explained this لَوْلَ اللَّهُ مَحْتَدَيْنَا وَلَا سَلَّيْنَا وَلَا تَصَدَّقْنَا أَوْ قَمَا قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمْ In one hadith Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said had it not been for the grace of Allah we would not have been on the guidance we would not have been on the right path no we would have performed the prayers no we would have been giving the in the charity it is all due to the rahmat of allah so our good actions are directly result of allah's grace and his rahmat without the rahmat of allah without the uh, grace of allah one cannot even step ahead one cannot even make one step towards the good deeds it only it only happens and it is only 
possible when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is on one and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grace is on one, when Allah's grace is there, when Allah's rahmat is there, then because of the rahmat and the grace, one will able to do the good deed. So in this hadith, we have learned a lesson which is that the, everything will happen and is happening with the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with the rahmat of Allah. So therefore, if we get a chance to do something good, we should never ever consider it as our own excellence or our own effort. It is true that we have to make an effort because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown us the, the, the path. You know, Allah, two paths. Inna hadayna husabeel, imma shakiru, imma kafura. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we have shown the man two, you know, two, two paths. One, <clears throat> a path of shaitan and one is path of Rahman. And this is entirely up to him. So whenever we do something good, when we get a chance to do something good, this is the result of the rahmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> And the next hadith which is narrated by Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha qalat Kana nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam idha asafatir rihu qala allahumma inni as'aluka khayra ha wa khayra ma fiha wa khayra ma ursilat bihi Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha narrates that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whenever a strong wind blew he would, mo- he would make the following dua and he would say, O oh Allah, I ask you of the goodness of this wind and the goodness of the, of, and of the goodness which is in it and of the goodness of, with which it has been sent. And I seek your refuge from the mischief of this wind and from the mischief, mischief of the uh, of this wind which is in it, and of the mischief which with which it has been sent, and وَإِذَا تَحَيَّلْتِ السَّمَاءُ تَغَيْرَ لَوْنُهُ when the when the sky would become cloudy, our prophet's face would become pale. You know the the color of his face would change. وَخَرَجَ وَدَخَلَ وَأَقْبَلَ وَأَدْبَرَ Our Prophet ﷺ would become so much restless that sometimes he would go, he would, he, would, he would go inside and sometimes he would come out, sometimes he would, move, he would make a move to the front and some to the, sometimes to the rear, which means our Prophet ﷺ could not sit. When, in, when, when he would see this happening, when he would see that this sky has become a cloudy when he would see the, the, the clouds are hanging over the heads. Our Prophet would become fearful and our Prophet would, be, you know, would become restless and he could not sit then and he could not take a rest. You know, he would be on a movement. He would be going inside, he would be coming outside, he would be, going, he would be, make, he would be making a move to the front and to the back and he would be there restless and his you know, his face color would would change. He would face he would become pale. So Aisha radiallahu taala and her mentions. When it starts, when it would start raining, when it would start raining, then our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam could be seen. You know, in 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 a rest, in a in, in a in a relief. Whereas before that, when the cloud was there, he, our Prophet sallallahu would be restless and our Prophet sallallahu would be going inside the house, coming out of the house and he would be there, walking here to there. And he would be, you know, he would be just there with, you know, the, the fear would be apparent and one could straightway notice that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the, the onlookers could say that this, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is not at relief at this moment. He is in a worry. He is in a concern. You know, his heart is 
filled with 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 the fear and when as soon as it would start raining and the condition of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would change so aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha ummul mu'minin our our mother the mother of all the believers she asked prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam regarding this oh prophet of allah why would this happen to you when the cloud you see then you you become restless oh prophet of allah oh messenger of allah why does this happen so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said this reminds me of the you know this when i see a cloud this cloud reminds me of the cloud that came to the nation of hadrat hud alaihi salam he says that the, this is a very similar cloud to that which came to uh, the the qom of hud alaihi salatu salam the nation of hud alaihi Allah says he recited the verse of this surah al-aqaf in which Allah says falam marauhu aridam mustaqbilam awdiyatihim qalu hada aridum mumtiruna a prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says that the he recited the verse of surah al-aqaf when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the punishment that came to the nation of hud alaihi salatu wasallam the nation of hud alaihi salatu wasallam they were rejecting the invitation of hazrat hud alaihi salatu wasalam and they were saying to hazrat hud alaihi salatu wasalam bring the punishment of allah which you are promising us bring the punishment punishment of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of which you are threatening us and frightening us so on what occasion one day they see the witness a cloud hanging over their heads you know it's coming towards their land and they said falam marau arid mustaqbil awdiyatihim allah say when they saw that cloud coming towards their land their walis qalu hada mumtiruna this cloud will be bringing for us the rain but initially in the in it was in fact it was not a cloud with the rain but it was the cloud with the punishment of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah say bal huwa musta'jaltum bihi this is what is coming now towards you it is what you were asking of rehun fiha adabun alim this is the wind this is the storm in which they were in is a painful torment you know where is where is a painful punishment of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so whenever prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would see the cloud he in his mind would come the scene of qaum hud that you know qaum hud saw a cloud and they were happy that this cloud is bringing the rain for us but what happened at the end it did not bring any rain to them but it was it was you know it was it was filled with the with the punishment of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam upon seeing the cloud he would become very worried and fearful maybe you know this cloud may be containing the punishment of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so therefore our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he would make a dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh allah i ask you the goodness of this wind and when, when the wind would be blowing and when the cloud would would be hanging on the heads he would also become very fearful so our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam upon seeing in the upon witnessing the wind he would make a dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he would be seeking the refuge of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the wind and when he would he see the cloud he would also get worried may maybe it be containing the punishment of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that would be falling on, on us so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would seeing after seeing these things you know that he would become very worried so what we learn that the lesson we learn that whenever such thing happens to us we should turn to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we should be worried that this you know this this storm and this tornado you know which is happening you know this is the punishment of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the adab of allah this is allah Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala in that you know you know wake up you know we should all be you know this this the the corona virus so something that we need to you know at this very moment we need to turn to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala we need to you know make toba to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala you know everything is Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala through these things Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala is alerting us Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala is warning us you know be aware you know wake up you know this is, is it is awake you know wake up call the wake up wake up oh, oh man you are sleeping you are sleeping so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is also a rahmat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this army you know this everything is you know um, 
You know, the, the wind is the army of Allah subhanahu these things are happening. We should never. One thing we should keep in our mind: once, whenever such thing, which is uh, whenever unpleasant things are happening, we should never make you know make uh, a joke of it. You know, we should never mock at the punishment of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You know, this making a mockery of the punishment of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, like the the. You know, it is it, it is the azab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at this, it, it is such azab to the extent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has you know the, the, the caused the masajids, the mosques to be to be closed. So mosques are closed and we have been deprived. We have been derived from going to the mosque. So never ever make uh, any mockery of the, such things because this is the this is the, this was the routine and this was the custom of the non-believers in the in, in the early communities. Whenever they would see the azab, they would make a mockery. And they like here, the, 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 the Hud Salam's nation, they used to say to Hud Salam, you are always frightening us from the you know uh, alerting us from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, let it come now, let it come now. Bring it to us. So when it came, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Well, this is what you were asking, and it has come now, and it is here now. Now you take it. So we should always fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever an unpleasant thing, whenever there is a you know there is a storm happening, there's a you know, you know strong wind is blowing. We, we never know the, the wind which is blowing. It could become a cause of our destruction, and this coronavirus. This could could become, you know, it is, you know, so many people are becoming a victim of this, and they are dying. So we should, at this very moment, uh, month of Ramadan is just around the corner. You know, we should, you know, we should be sincerely, you know, we should be sincere in everything. And remember. Allah knows what is in the hearts. You know, whether, whether we are making a sincere toba or not, Allah knows best. Whether we are offering the prayer for the Allah for the sake of Allah or not, Allah knows best. You know, what I'm at this very moment speaking to you for my, you know, for my name and fame or for the sake of Allah, only Allah knows best. So we should always, always do everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we are making a toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should be sincere in there. When we are, when we are you know, doing the recitation of the Quran, we should be sincere say that when we are giving in the charity we should be when we are helping the poor when we are helping anyone we should be sincere the why i'm doing this because with every action is dependent upon your need upon your intention so so these two ahadith of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the lesson we learn from these two is that the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should always be in our hearts, it should settle in our hearts. So if anything that is unpleasant or if anything that could be that could become the cause of our destruction you know we should we should you know we should straight away without making any delay we should turn to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam whenever he witnessed the strong wind you know he would start making a dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save him from that and whenever he would witness the cloud he would you know he would remember and this would bring the scene of the cloud of the komi hood and he would think maybe you know, you know this might be maybe it's containing it is containing the the the, the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that could fall on us so he would turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so my respected listeners Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know has given us a chance and the the wise and the intelligent is he you know who you know, who makes of, who makes use of that chance and he turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and you the tawfiq that we turn to him before the time of death comes to us and before we are seized with any uh, any any punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah at this very moment, although the, the, the coronavirus is 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 in existence and is there, but alhamdulillah, you know. This is the grace of Allah, and this is the punishment. This is the rahmat of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. We are safe. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala kept us safe, and we are safe. And this is because of Allah's Allah's rahmat and Allah's grace. We should carry on and continue making this dua to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Oh Allah, you keep us in the safety. Oh Allah, we ask you to keep us safe. And when the dua of you know you know of safety we make to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, then and this is what Prophet Sallam taught us that we should always be making the dua of safety 
to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that oh Allah grant us safety in everything in our in, in while we are working while we are walking while we are in the family while with the friends wherever we are keep us you know keep us uh, in the safety or uh, keep us safe oh Allah so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, you know, he was the Imam al Anbiya, and how much uh, the fear of you know, Allah he had in his heart whenever he, when the thought of the Qiyamah came in his mind, or when he used to re, uh, when he used to uh, read the uh, uh, recite the verses of the Quran in which the uh, the the kiamat was mentioned, in which the the scene those horrific scenes uh, were described. Our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would become very fearful. Of the, you know, after reading of those horrific um, scenes and horrific circumstances of the kiamat, Allah subhanahu wa taala may He create His love and His fear in our hearts, and may Allah subhanahu wa taala give us a tawfiq to um, learn a lesson, take a lesson from every um, everything that is happening around us, so that we can rectify our own selves. May Allah subhanahu wa taala accept my saying and your listening, and may Allah subhanahu Ta'ala make it means of our forgiveness and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh Allah you make every child every son and daughter obedient to their parents I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that oh Allah give us a tawfiq to to do something good that pleases you and oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq that we remain and we refrain from everything that would displease you and oh Allah we ask you to save us from the mischief of our own selves our inner selves and our sh- and the shaitan and oh Allah give us a tawfiq to do everything for your sake and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that oh Allah those who are jobless oh Allah you create the means for them so that they can find the job and oh Allah those who uh, uh, those who are still single and they're looking for the for, for the spouses oh Allah you make things easy for them and oh Allah those who are in the worries if any worries or any difficulties oh Allah re- remove their worries and their difficulties and oh Allah those who have worries of the children oh Allah make the children obedient to them and oh Allah those who have passed away forgive them oh Allah we ask you and we beg you that oh Allah you shower your mercy and you show your mercy to the to the to the entire ummah oh Allah we ask you to protect the ummah oh Allah we ask you to remove all the difficulties from this ummah oh Allah we ask you to spread the iman and the hidayat in the entire uh, humanity oh Allah we ask you to help the Muslims of the Palestine and the Muslims of uh, Yemen and the Muslims of Syria the Muslims of occupied Kashmir the Muslims of India and the Muslims of China the Muslims of Sri Lanka Muslims of Afghanistan Pakistan India and wherever the Muslims are oh Allah you protect their iman and their wealth and their properties and their belongings oh Allah we ask you to accept our sitting here and accept our listening and here and our our saying oh Allah you are the one who are the are forgiving and you are the one who is all merciful oh Allah you have your mercy on us and our children and our elders and our young ones وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين